I think, do I got the lapel mic? There's a mic there, there's a mic there, there's a mic there. Um, just always got to be heard. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. My name is Alex Coulomb. And um, for a while, I've been involved in making XR content and more and more lately, live events. And thank you for coming to what is technically a workshop about um, this new tool we're building with my new company, Heavenue, which is intended to make uh, building a live event, particularly for VR, um, easier than ever. So we're going to kind of talk through um, where we are now, and I'll give a little bit of a, a workshop. Ideally, I wanted to do everything actually how you would over the cloud, but the internet here is uh, not so good. So I got a little bit of a recording, and I'll try to do something um, live for you at the end if it works out. So let's see if my clicker works. It stopped working. Amazing. Let me try. There we go. Great. Who am I? Um, I'm a bunch of things, and we have no time to get through any of this, but if any of those words mean anything to you, you can clap and cheer and say, yeah, one of those things. Whoa. We'll cover a little bit of it. Um, but I want to start with a quick story. Back in 2008, in London, boom, 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 um, I was studying abroad, and it was architecture and theater. And I had the most wonderful professor in the world, a gentleman by the name of Michael Barclay. And he took us to all these incredible shows across London, um, all sorts of different shows, and he had all the hookups and got us into the front five rows of every performance we attended. And I had never seen world-class live performers that close before. And it turns out that seeing performers that close is very different from seeing them from the nosebleed seats in the back of the house. And it's very different from seeing these you know, actors, many of whom also appear in film, seeing them in close-up. And I started to ask myself at that point if there was any way that XR could start to democratize that experience. Not XR, I didn't know what XR was back in 2008, but technology in general. Because I was thinking about the experience of what it's like to be in kind of a fireside chat with a performer and what it means if you try to abstract that to the point where um, you don't necessarily need the physical audience there, but you then allow the audience to be present in other forms, maybe an audience that's coming from around the world, and then allow them to do something like get very close to the performer in a way that they wouldn't even able to if they were in the front row of a theater. Uh, maybe there's a few immersive theater shows where you could do that, but that level of in-person close-up for someone who's right in the moment with their characters is pretty hard to do. So this was the question. Can the technology democratize that experience of front row theater? And back in 2013, um, I had the Oculus Rift DK1, and I was playing with trying to take this. I should also mention I became an architect. Hooray, graduated, got a BR, all that fun stuff, and was designing theaters. And a lot of my work in designing theaters was this sort of thing, where we were just trying to show, hey, here's what it's like to have these particular um, takes on this particular seat. And when I started being able to do that in VR, it made a world of a difference, because now it wasn't abstract anymore. I could put a, a VR headset on someone, and they could jump between different versions of that same seat and really feel like they were in a theater. That led to um, going from actually working on theaters to working on theater shows. This was Kenneth Branagh's Macbeth at the Park Avenue Armory, which was like Game of Thrones live, and we learned a ton from just being able to mock up set design and actor blocking and lights in there. And that led to uh, playing with you know, theaters we were designing and letting like, the set designers who were going to be in the theater mock up um, Equus or whatever kind of show they were imagining that could be on that stage someday with Tilt Brush. And that led to um, actually having really good digital twins of the theaters we were working on. Pay attention to this one because it's going to come back up in a moment with Heaven You. It's a real space now. And you could say that I was going between using VR for physical things in the real world and uh, physical architecture in the real world and physical theater taking place in the real world. But more and more my interest started to become, is there any way we could just stay inside VR and have that be the be all end all of the entire experience? And so in 2018, uh, a collective of us formed in New York City uh, to create something called Live in Plastic Land, which was a series of studies for the VR platform High Fidelity, rest in peace, where we got to test everything from different avatars to different performance types. Let's do a scene from The Wire. Let's do a scene from Shakespeare. Let's do some improv comedy. And a wonderful team of people um, came together to start to figure out what worked well in a VR live event. And we learned a ton from that. Um, and even some, in some cases, we were just um, trying to do a one-to-one -one translation of what does uh, an improv workshop look like in the real world versus the VR equivalent of that. And in some cases, we were trying to figure out what are things you can only do in the medium. 
So this is playing with larval masks and realizing you don't necessarily need bodies. Um, this is playing with um, eye contact and finding different ways to get close to each other. And this is something else. Oh. My baby! Mama! Mama! I never... oh. <laughs> and you know, those are things that no matter how talented you are at improv comedy, you're not necessarily going to be able to become a giant on stage and pick up your uh, co-performer there. So these are some of the things we we're studying that I took forward um, into the years to come. Um, soon, I was working with some of the lovely folks in the front row here who have a talk on Friday about Onboard XR, which is a wonderful um, festival that happens every so often where there's all these incredible experiments happening in WebXR. So more lessons got learned in there. And then um, I started to experience more and more live VR theater taking place in other platforms, particularly social VR, and started to see certain patterns emerging. For example, having a hero audience member who gets to feel very special and participate in the experience uh, with a degree of agency that you wouldn't usually see in live theater in the real world, and then allowing for more passive audience, audience experience as well, where maybe you're invisible or you're tiny little robots in this case, and can move around the space in other ways and experience the show, usually with some kind of freedom of movement. So I'm also taking in all the lessons from these incredible experiences I'd seen, but I also started to realize that everyone who's trying to jury rig social VR to make it work for live events it's, it's a lot of friction for the creators and often for the people coming on board because social VR's goal, VR chat's goal, isn't to put on a frictionless live event. It's to gather lots of Pikachus and Iron Giants and furry rabbits in a room and let them hang out and do whatever they want together. It's not necessarily to give um, a lot of resources to, to a host of an event and let them control things like, I want all my audience members to have this particular avatar. I want everyone to be muted during this particular part of the show. And so all of this started to lead into developing a platform, oh sorry, all this started to lead into a platform that could do this well. The last thing here is I just want to say that you're going to see that I, I'm really interested in how you can use powerful cloud computing to create more realistic characters. But I grew up where like this was the height of video game performance. Like this told a wonderful story, and a little head nod with some voice acting was about as far as it went. And that was fine. But I also wanted the freedom to be able to do more. So here's some early studies I was doing in Unity um, across VR and AR. Um, being able to move around different elements of a set, being able to block out how a performance might go, um, having a god's eye view, this is Magic Leap down here, and moving around, and then also saying, okay, maybe I want to go more photorealistic, but then it takes a lot of optimization to get something to run on a Quest or a Vive Focus 3. So that's a challenge in itself as well. So it wasn't we until right, my dears. Yes, December are. that something like this could happen. Now, we begin. A Christmas Carol. God bless you, merry gentlemen. May nothing you dismay. <laughs> Mercy, dreadful apparition, why do you trouble me? You will be haunted by three spirits. Couldn't I take them all at once and have it over, Jacob? And that was um, a VR show. The, NVIDIA tells us that's the largest use of Cloud XR they've had to date. Cloud XR allows you to connect to a cloud computer so that you have a much higher fidelity um, experience inside your VR headset because you're not rendering it locally, you're rendering it on a device somewhere else. So. That production took about three months with a, a very small staff working with Actors Theatre of Louisville. Um, we had Ari Tarr acting out of his home in Oregon with an Xsense suit and LiveLink face on his phone and putting all this into the Heavenu cloud infrastructure, which you'll see more of in a moment. And that led to saying, well, we really then want to make it so that you don't need to be an expert in Unreal Engine to start to have this kind of live performance. And so what I'll show you today is what we're developing as a tool to start to simplify that. Um, why haven't you now? Why is it possible now, first of all? Is cloud computing costs are continuing to go down? There's more cloud computing around the world. Um, Metahumans are a really incredible way to design humans that, to me, manage to cross the uncanny valley if you do it right, and that looks particularly nice in VR. 
and then being able to have free or low cost ways to do performance capture. Um, there's a lot of ways you can do it with the face now and there's more ways on coming that you can do just with the body. I believe there's a company called Move AI today that I saw give a demo in London. Um, check out their demo. They have like a, a GoPro way of doing body capture as well. And the core idea is that we wanna let people join uh, shows from any kind of device and then from the performer side, you can do volumetric capture if you want, you can do motion capture, you can do green screen, and then we do all these things with show control to try to sync audio and, and all the different kinds of capture formats that are coming in together, OSC, DMX, MIDI, so that you can have a unified live experience for everyone who attends the show. And the uncanny valley is particularly uncanny inside VR, so you really want everyone to look good. Oh, sorry, that was just a quick peek at MetaHumans. Um, this is a free tool released by Epic. Just I encourage anyone who wants to play around with creating their own MetaHuman to go to metahumancreator.unrealengine.com uh, and get started. And then this becomes a file that you can bring into um, Unreal Engine or uh, Heaven You as well so that you can start to have a character look exactly the way you want. Um, here's a little bit of what it looked like behind the scenes with Ari um, as he would perform live as Scrooge. This was during the Q&A post-show. And here we go. I think this is, now this is gonna be like a little bit of an extended preview of what we have going on in here. So the idea in the Heaven You Cloud Editor is you'd go to heavenyou.io and uh, have an account, and then you're running immediately from your browser into the cloud. Here's a little example of trying to set up something like what we did for Christmas Carol. Um, you'll see there's no real like UI design here, but it's about starting to put the building blocks in place to make the show work the way we want it to. So the lobby, of course, is a bit of a placeholder, just a simple way to gather your audience before the show starts always important, and then you just kind of have your stage, where in this case we've just placed Scrooge, we have some other characters available, and you notice that there's a menu here where you can immediately start to connect this to live data or pre-recorded data. One thing we learned during Christmas Carol was that you didn't need a ton of things to be live for it to feel like a live show. The ghosts were pre-recorded, sometimes Ari's body was pre-recorded, but if you can keep his face live, then that helps the audience feel engaged, especially if they can look um, at the audience members. I'll also mention briefly that one tricky thing is striking a balance between um, high fidelity facial capture, which you get from something like a phone, comparing that to what you'd get from, say, an HTC Vive I Pro I with um, some mouth tracking as well. So that's something you want to go between figuring out how to make your performer feel engaged with the actual audience by being able to see them um, versus being able to get as much fidelity of facial capture as possible. So here, I'm just connecting um, the face to player one, and I just have the live link face app on my phone, which I simply put as player one. It connects to the cloud computer, and now I can start to control the face of this character. Right now, the body is still a pre-recorded animation, but the face is now live. Um, spoiler alert, if I hit publish in the bottom left there, at any point, the idea here would be I can then push this to the Heaven You Cloud, and now it becomes a way to say, let's have a 1,000 people join the show, spin up a 1,000 VMs that have whatever I've built here, and now that's a live show that's ready to go from a browser, from a VR headset, whatever um, people might want to be using it for. Um, here's a simple look at being able to play, play with the weather, changing the time of day. And really, this is just a wrapper on top of Unreal Engine. We're just trying to take all the billions of things you can do inside Unreal Engine and tailor it a little bit more towards live events. Um, there's a program called Twin Motion, which is kind of like Unreal Engine tailored for architecture. And this is kind of what we're trying to build, but more with an eye toward um, if you're setting up a show. So here you see some different weather. Maybe you want to have a blizzard going on. And you can start to move through here. And what we're just going to start to build up is um, these different elements of, of, at first, Christmas Carol, and then I'll show you a couple other things we can have going on in here as well. So we got some different environments. Um, I've imported the, <laughs> the Brockman Hall for Opera in here as well. If you do just want to set it on, on stage, because that's what feels good for the particular show you're putting on, basic you know, transform, position, rotate, um, scale kind of controls. And then you can start to bring in characters. Here's the, the Heaven You CTO. And we're going to give him the animation that was recorded for the Ghost of Christmas Future, which is uh, particularly frightening. So here he is. Um, sorry, HN. This is not what he's like in real life. He's much more charming and, and, and friendly. 
But uh, you start to see, you just start to position, you play with blocking any animations that you already have blocked out. Whether it's going to be something that will be live or it's going to be pre-recorded for the live show, you can start to figure out how that proximity feels. And at any moment, you can pop into VR as well and start to see how it feels when you get closer to the characters there. Um, for a moment, you quickly saw the props menu right there. Right now, we just have some elements there from um, Christmas Carol, but the idea is that anything that's a GLTF file, uh, .udatasmith file, FBX, all those things can come in at runtime. You'd upload them to the cloud and they could appear um, directly in your scene. Here's playing with lights. Of course, Unreal Engine, especially if you're in Unreal Engine 5, has uh, particularly beautiful lighting. So being able to bring down the bar for the technical level of expertise you need to start to create these shows is really our goal. We want to get to a point where any brilliant um, theater creator can pretty quickly get past thinking about translating their vision through software and just have a better sense of like, if I was in a theater and I was gonna hang some lights or I was gonna put some things on stage, how would I start to approach that? So here we are back in the Brockman Hall for Opera. You can see how the lights are starting to affect the space in there. Um, Scrooge has scaled up a little bit, so we might scale them back down to be a little bit more um, human-sized. And as we start to move through this, you'll see um, the way that we kind of um, bring all this together. We have a little bit, we're a little short on time, so I'm gonna skip through this a little bit so we can get further. Oh, unless the video is just gonna stop there. That'd be a little bit sad. Well, that seems to be the case. Okay, that's fine. I can't skip to the middle of the video. Well, toward the end, we, what we get to at the end of the video is basically making it uh, so we get to the point where you have the entire um, scene with Marley built out, and then you start to mess with it where it's like, what if all the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future are all there at once? Um, when you start to build these things, there are still concepts that I want people to keep in mind when you're creating a live event. What do you want live versus recorded? What do you want to be um, single, a single player experience versus a multiplayer experience? What is the audience's role? What kind of agency do they have? Are they passive observers? Can they affect the narrative in any meaningful way? Um, when do you want something to feel more hyper real? When is it better to be more abstract and leave more to the imagination? There's so many different ways for a performer to be captured. If you want them to look like themselves, you might go for green screen, monoscopic or stereoscopic, or volumetric capture, which is getting very quickly to a point where that can be streamed in real time. And then mocap, of course, is a great way to let you play characters that don't look anything like you. Um, IRL versus AR versus VR versus streaming versus hybrid, we have a show opening off Broadway in a couple days that is a physical show happening at the Brishnikov Arts Center, and you can go to the actual show, but while that show is live, that's when the Heaven You virtual experience is also happening. So that starts to put some interesting limitations where if, it needs to, if the virtual show needs to match what's happening in the physical world, at least timing-wise, um, it can't be as standalone as the VR show. For Christmas Carol, we had a physical show happening at Actors Theatre of Louisville, but it was not happening at the same time as the VR show, so they could be a little bit more standalone, even though they shared some assets. Um, some of the things that we're excited about adding in the near future, uh, for anyone who just saw Jerry give her, her wonderful talk on Tilt 5, being able to shrink down a Heaven You show to be tabletop AR is very exciting to us. Um, body motion capture from a webcam is exciting. Whoops, sorry. Um, and then things like Looking Glass and the Lumi Pads from Leia, being able to make it so you don't necessarily need to have a headset on to have some sense of scale is uh, particularly exciting as well. Here's a little preview of um, Chekhov OS coming from the Bershnikov Art Center, starring Mikhail Bershnikov. <laughs> And so this is an interactive pixel streamed experience where the virtual audience, of course, gets to do some things that are different from what the physical audience gets to do. And so as you move into the theater, you'll see that there's all these different rooms you can go into, and each room has its own um, very special thing going on. I want to try skipping ahead in the video a little bit, but I'm afraid it won't work. Yeah, it just stops at the beginning. That's okay. Um, you can do operation. I don't want to spoil the show. Anyone can go to it, though, so I want everyone to check it out. Um, there's some fun things going on there. And then this is a show with uh, Showcap Entertainment and Seven Fingers opening in a couple days. This will also have a, a VR and a, a pixel stream version. Now, mind you, um, the experiences I'm showing right now are not built with a Heaven You editor yet. They are using the Heaven You cloud infrastructure that does require you to say, hey, here's my Unreal Engine project. I would like to propagate this to, you know, 10,000 virtual machines. But we're getting to that point where you can do it with just the Heaven You editor. 
So that's going to be a lovely show. And um, I'd love to show you, with a little bit of time we have left, but you can clap. You can say, good job, Alex. Good try, good try. <laughs> you can't make videos play, but it's all right. Um, and you can do this, by the way, in the Heaven You Cloud Editor now. You can actually get the whole audience to stand up and cheer. Um, let me see, with a little bit of time we have left, and I'm not sure if this is a countdown till the end of the talk or when I should start Q&A, but either way, let me see if I can pull up my phone for a moment and uh, mirror it and do a quick little live link face thing just so you can see what this looks like in action. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I already forgot where live link face is. There we go. Okay, cool. Oh, you guys can't see this. That's hilarious. Okay, I guess I gotta move this over. Yeah, it's over there. Hi, hey, give, give, give yourselves a hand. You're all out there. <laughs> and now you all have to sign waivers or something. Um, and so I'm connected to my mobile hotspot, which is fun. And I got the have a new cloud over here. Everyone says never do a live demo during a, a tech conference. Only bad things can happen. I say Pasha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So, yeah, ideally, again, I wanted to do this live. I wanted to give a little setup of like, hey, let's create like waiting for Godot or something like that. Oh, and I can't even see. I got to look over here. Um, so, for example, I've got like a little um, meta human randomizer right now until we get to the point where you can create any kind of person you want. And oh my god, with the lag and everything, this is hilarious. So I'm going to try to click on the guy down here. And you'll see there's all these different elements that I can start to randomize. But the main thing is I can connect this right now to my phone, even though we're in different places. I'll be player one. And I can um, update this character to look all sorts of different ways. Burp, 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 burp. You can just see all sorts of fun stuff happening down there. Let's scale them up a little bit. <laughs> you, know, you know how waiting for Godot goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but yeah, my face should actually also be his face. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to have a little apples to apples comparison. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, where'd it go? Oh, I'm, I'm alt-tabbing the wrong thing. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. You guys are so patient. You're wonderful. Um, ba -ba -ba, there's that. We got our guy. And then over here is where our... Live link faces, so we're going to put that side by side. Yeah, and then we'll get back to our guy down here. Let's go full screen if we can. And start to navigate back down. Where'd he go? He should be pretty big, right? There he is. OK, so yeah, so if I start to uh, do some things with my mouth, um, this all gets translated over there. So you are going to see a little bit of latency here. <laughs> Don't dance off. Stay here. Stay in one spot. Um, but the idea, of course, is that if we were doing this for a live show, um, the Heaven You data publisher, as we call it, could take audio, motion capture data, face data, and sync it all up so that everyone is getting um, the same experience at the same time. And um, at any moment, if I say, you know what, let's make the character different and change whatever we want, I can do that too. Um, I can also lock them and unlock them, change their hair color, all sorts of fun stuff. OK, so um, in case this is, oh, now it's counting up. That means I'm in negative. So let's end it there. Do we have time for questions, yes or no? Yes. OK, great. So thank you. Um, ask a question. Hey. Hey, Alex. <laughs> What's um, up? Two questions. First one, for the two upcoming shows that you were talking about, where can we go to learn more and get tickets? Yeah. And second thing, um, <laughs> when we're talking about using your uh, platform, how many live concurrent users can you have? Great question. Um, I'll start with um, the one that I know the most about, which is the not the websites of where to find tickets for these things. Um, we've never actually run up against the limit of the, the maximum number of live concurrent users. Um, we've, we've tried 500, and the only reason we haven't done more than that is it's expensive and we're bootstrapped. Um, but in theory, it's as many cloud computers are, as are available. And actually, let me just show you real quick. Here's what the Heaven You Cloud Editor looks like. Um, so if I'm logging in, I pop in here, and then I would start to set up, oh, someone's running something right now. Um, this is probably, if I had to guess, this is probably actually for um, 
the live show on June 4th. I'll show you tickets in one second, but I just want to see where this is. Here we go. And I'm just peeking in to whoever is in here right now, and I can kind of move around the, uh, the experience in there. This is kind of the Heaven You Control Board. Um, normally, you would just be giving these links, what you see in the, the bar right there, to the attendees. But if I have a, a whole bunch of these populated, I can pop in and also just make sure um, everyone's having a good experience. Now, if I were to uh, stop this event right now, I'll just show you real quick what it looks like to create um, a new event. So let's say we're going to have a show, and I, I know that we've sold 500 tickets. I'd set up 500 attendees. I can do an auto stop to make sure that we don't run the show longer than we need to. This publish token just tells me here's the event ID, and anyone who's sending data to the event uses that. And then these are just ratios of what kinds of GPUs I want to use. RTX A6000, very powerful, more expensive than the other ones. And then if I'm going to be doing things with mocap or audio, I set that up as well. But you'll see that we generated 56 pages of um, VMs, each with their own unique, unique invite token, and I could hit start, and those would all come online, and I'd immediately start being charged um, a fair amount of money. Now, to answer the other question, um, we want to type in uh, orchard, The Orchard Off-Broadway, and that's where you can get tickets for this show, um, opening in just a few days, and then the other one is, um, I'm just gonna search for it real quick, Seven Fingers. Um, with show cap, it's June 4th. And I'm sorry to say this too, but I also have a discount code I, that I can't remember offhand, but if someone wants a few dollars off when they're buying their ticket, just ping me and I'm, I'm happy to give that to you. Um, here's a press release for it. Let's see if we can actually find the link um, to actually go to the show. Um, that's so interesting that they put a Vimeo link, but not the actual thing. In any case, search for Show Gap Entertainment, Seven Fingers, Carry Me Home, you'll find tickets to that as well. Um, any other questions before we wrap up here? <laughs> yes. Uh, my question was really about um, how you deal with sort of latency issues um, and live performance and knowing what's the, how the audience is reacting, since I assume there's a small gap in time between the performance getting to the audience and the return. Absolutely. So um, latency is inevitable. Ideally, you minimize latency by uh, compressing the data that's coming through. And my CTO could talk way more about that. But basically, because no matter what, you are going to have different data coming in at different times, you, we just put a time code on all of it. And so you just wait for whichever data is taking the longest. And then you have all the other data sync up to that, which does mean that in some cases, you know, Jonathan here looks at me. It's funny because he's the performer and I'm not a performer, but let's pretend I am. Jonathan looks at me. I'm the performer. I react to him, and maybe there is like a one second delay there, um, but the way you minimize that is the way that data comes through and making sure that everyone is um, using a geolocated VM that's close to where they are. So there's all sorts of little tricks that start to minimize latency, but absolutely that is a thing that can happen and needs to be calculated into thinking about the show and designing it and rehearsing it. I can't express enough how important it is to be rehearsing throughout the process inside uh, a virtual platform so you understand what that audience experience is going to be. For Christmas Carol, Robert Barry Fleming, the director, was in Louisville sitting in a VR headset watching Ari perform in Oregon the same way the audience was going to and then gave him notes on his performance, not based on what he was seeing on a flat screen, but what he was seeing in VR. So keep that in mind. Yeah. So do the actors, if they're in different proximal locations, can they be on the same time sync or are they kind of off so that at least their performances don't have that lag. Yeah, I mean, ideally you do keep your performers as close together as possible. Um, I have done one production where we tried having someone on the West Coast and someone on the East Coast. Uh, the dialogue, you could feel a little bit of the back and forth. If you have a, a really talented or performer who's practiced a lot, they actually learn to get like a little bit ahead of the next line. Because ultimately, you're trying to make sure the experience feels right to the audience, but you know, you're putting undue cognitive load on the performers, and ideally, you don't do that. So. Awesome. Yeah, that's OK. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, Alex. You know, we've been connected on LinkedIn for a couple years now or something. I, I didn't know how amazing what, what you're up to. I'm just blown away. Uh, what you're doing with MetaHumans, uh, your cross-platform interoperability, and leveraging off offloading compute with WebXR, it's, it's the way to go. And we need to support this guy. <laughs> Thanks.
And then here's my silly diagram of like someday I want to have a show that's AR, VR, in person, all sorts of things all happening at once. So let's make that happen too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Great. laughs> Thanks everyone. And I'll be hanging out. Oh, and there's some fun little postcards. First come, first serve. If you want to mail something to your mom, it just says greetings from virtual reality and it's a cute little postcard. <laughs> Great job, Alex. Great. Thanks.